All right. Uh, we've been so we started talking about Jesus. Who is he? Does he does he even ex, did he really exist? And what evidences do we have? All right. So Alex, if I was going to ask you, how do you know Jesus really existed without using the Bible? How would you answer that? Hopefully, David can answer it because I've been drilling everybody. What do you think? History? Yeah, right. if you look back at history. Yeah. Was there really, you know, look at, because they wrote down his history. Just look back. Was there really a person named Jesus? It, you know, and if you look back, there really was. Amazing, you know, he really did exist. So that's one way. Um, and then we were talking about the Bible. That's what we started last week. How do we know this book's really true? And we looked at what the Bible claims to be. The Bible, this book says of itself that God actually wrote it. That's what the, that's, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what this, this book claims to be God written. But who actually wrote it? Men. Men did. And one problem with men is what? Make we make mistakes. So last week he said, are there mistakes in the Bible? What do you think? Do you think? What kind of mistakes? 99.7, right? There's, there are mistakes, but it's 99.6% accurate. Like, perfect. It's crazy. Um... There's a, there was a crazy statistic. It said there's, a, there's like a hundred and something thousand words in the New Testament. 27 books in the New Testament. There's 120 something thousand words. How many mistakes in all, in all of the... Because they have manuscripts like um, writings from 2,000 years ago, copies of the New Testament. How many mistakes do you think there are in all of those of the New Testament? 30. 300 and something thousand mistakes. And there's only 100,000 words in there. So somebody will tell you that, like, how can you believe that? But there's a reason. Because we, there's so many copies. There's like 20,000 copies of the New Testament in Greek and Hebrew and all that. And you know how much there are for, like, other historical um, documents? There's... There's only, uh, you know, actually, I don't know how many. But they, it's a crazy statistic, I'll tell you. They said if you stacked up all the other things, like stuff written about Caesar and all that, it'd probably stack four feet high. All the documents they found, the old ones, stacked them all up four feet high. For all the old documents we have in the New Testament, one mile. Crazy. So, statistics. But, uh, you know, th this, this only comes into play when you really start questioning... Is that book true? All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And more importantly today, we're going to talk about um, the Gnostic Gospels. Have you, how many people have ever heard of them? Gnostic Gospels. Apocalyptic, Apocryphas. Anybody? Nothing. All right. Well, it might be new. Let me see what my next slide is. All right, we're going to read something. Matthew 7, 24. If you have a Bible... Um, Julia, Julia has a couple right there. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. I got like 20 slides, but we're not going to go over all of them. I'm going to sum it up because uh, we're a little short on time. It says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Who's talking right now? Jesus is talking, right? <clears throat> And this, he's telling everybody, he said, David, if you build, if you hear the words of mine and do them, you'll be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And 25 says, and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So what is it telling us? Anybody that uh, listens to me would it be, uh, will create a foundation. 
like that one man that has his foundation on that rock instead of something as simple as or us on found it as sand. All right. All right. So he, he you know he uses this something we can all understand. Somebody they put this house on the rock and the wind came and they the wind was kicking the house and the storms and the floods were pushing it and nothing happened. But the guy who built his house on the sand, the winds came and boom, the house was destroyed. All right, so that's what he's saying. So he's saying to you and to us, to me, because his words are still relevant today, he said, anybody who's listening to this, if you build your life on what I'm telling you, you're going to live on a rock. You're going to be built on a rock that no matter what comes, you can't be taken down. That's, that's what he's saying. And I, so what we're going to study today is the writings of Jesus, the New Testament, can you really build your life on it? Because there was like 52 other books called Gospels that were found in 1945, and a lot of people got shooken up from it. And uh, the question today is we're going to ask is, is this New Testament and this Bible something we can trust? And uh, if it is, then you know, what are we going to do with what Jesus said? All right, guys, so before you today, I have one, two, three, four, five, six books. Okay? Six books. And this is like a guide to all of them. All right, this is called the Apocrypha. Anybody heard of this? All right, this is written, uh, this is before Jesus. These are books not included in the Bible, but they are in some of this Bible. All right, and I'm not too familiar with all of these, but they are uh, they're books, Ecclesiasticus, uh, the Wisdom of Solomon. So there are other books written that aren't included in the Bible, but in this in this Bible they do have some. Let's see which ones they have. Have you read some? Uh, I briefly, I haven't, I haven't really done much research on them. Oh, it doesn't have a guide in here. But, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Alright, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> the book of Tobit, the book of Judith, the book of Maccabees, the Book of Sin, the Wisdom of Ben Sirah. So those are extra books that we don't have in, in the Protestant Bible. So can you trust them? Okay, that's the question. This is the Gnostic Bible. Anybody ever heard of this? The Gnostic Gospels, apparently not. Well, you, you will. All right. Like I said, this one is uh, the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Ju um, Judas, the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of Mary, a lot of Gospels. And they found this in Egypt, and we're going to get to that. The Book of Mormon, anybody know what that is? You know? Book of Mormon. We got the Quran. Ever heard of the Quran, Alex? No. Never? Muslim. You know what Muslims are? Yeah. That's their book, the Quran. All right, so we got four. Read that one. <laughs> you haven't read it? Yeah. <laughs> I want to learn Muslim. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you, you won't learn it reading that. You know? <laughs> That's in English. I know. Um, so, the point is, Muslims build their life on this book. Mormons build their life on this book. Christians build their life. You know, this, this has some. This, they're Christians. Christians build their life on the Kaka book. Christians build their life on the... Uh, the Bible, just plain Bible, uh, the Holy Bible. Some people build their life on the Gnostic Bible. Some people build their life on the Apocrypha. Which one are you going to build your life on? Okay, that's a question. Because these are all historical documents. Which one's right? Are you confident enough to make a stance on it? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so... These Gospels, these are called the Gnostic Gospels, 52 of them. Why aren't they included in the New Testament? That's the question we're going to ask today. Um, do they contain information that we should know? And we'll read a little bit of some of them. They're pretty crazy. Uh, last week we talked about the, um, 
what's the movie? Uh, the Vinci Code. The Vinci Code. Yeah, I asked everybody if they could watch it. Anybody watch it? Well, you should. You did. I really watched it. Yeah, you should watch it because it'll get you thinking. Like, whoa, this is in the Bible, uh, and that the re they got this the Da Vinci Code from that book. All right, anybody know what this is? Anybody seen these two movies? Have you watched it, Abraham Lincoln, Vamp Vampire Slayer? You've watched it? I've watched it, but I don't remember it. I haven't watched it. Will you? Better get off that phone, girl, whatever it is. All right, so these two movies came out around the same time. Abraham Lincoln, this was pretty good. I watched that one. Like the original portraying the life of him. And then they have Abraham Lincoln, the Vampire Hunter. And I was like, whoa, I thought Abraham Lincoln was a president. You're telling me he was a vampire hunter? And, you know, so we're getting, like, these two different stories. And I don't know that anybody got confused, but they're like, you know, looking at them, you think, well, which one is true? Was he just a president or was he really a vampire slayer at night, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> what he happened, was he was both. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in Jesus' time <clears throat> is that people started writing about him and what he said and what he did. And two different stories started coming up. You had the one original, then you had this kind of legendary thing. And we're going to get into today is that that's what these are, the Gnostic Gospels. And uh, we're going to get into why. All right, that's the Da Vinci Code, uh, some of the books. Uh, so here's some of the stuff that it says. It says, the new history says that Jesus and Mary Lag Magdalene were married. All right? Jesus didn't preach the kingdom of God or repentance from sin carrying one's cross. He preached the good news about the unity of the masculine and fem feminine principles of reality and impregnated Mary Magdalene, who is the real Holy Grail. All right, so just from that right there, what can you see that totally goes against the Bible that we have? He was married. Who said that? He said, oh, yeah. He married Mary Magdalene. He actually had a kid with her. Uh... And that he preached um, more about men and women. Yeah. Not about, like, the Right. Yeah, he preached men. More about... Morning, guys. Morning. Men. More about trying to turn women into men than the kingdom of God. All right? That was crazy. Um, so that was the book. <clears throat> so she carries the blood of Jesus in there. So this crazy stuff came out. Um... Of the Gnostic Gospels. So just to fill you in, is that we I, I threw out all these books. We got the Apocrypha. You ever heard of the Apocrypha? Uh -huh. So they're old old they're old documents around the Old Testament time that aren't included in our Bible. They are in the Catholic Bible. We have the Gnostic Bible, Gnostic Gospels. Ever heard of those? Yeah. So we got fifty two of those. Catholic Bible, we got the Book of Mormon, which Alex, you never heard of? You said never heard of it. You haven't heard of that one? And the Quran, which Sarah wants to learn how to speak Muslim. Muslim is not a language, but yes. Uh, so, all these, and we talked about which one are you confident building your life off of? you got the Holy Bible, because uh, there's a whole lot of people building their life on all of these. Um, so, today we're going to talk about the Gnostic Gospels. What are they? Should they be trusted? Um, so, here's a little history what are the Gnostic Gospels? Why do people even find curiosity in them? Um, <clears throat> people wonder if there is information about Jesus that we don't know. So what, what makes these so interesting? To you guys, maybe, maybe you know, it doesn't seem so interesting right now, but what if I were to tell you that one of these books was written telling us about Jesus in his young age, from baby to twelve? which the areas we don't have in the Bible, which one of them does claim to be written about that. Uh, there's actually a story that says one time he was playing with these kids and Jesus killed a kid and he apologized to the dad. And he said, you know, I'm sorry, I'll bring him back to life. And he rose him up again. So uh, that was in one of, the, one of these Gospels, I don't remember. But um, they claim to fill in the gaps of history that we don't have. All right, that's what they are. Um, what does the word Gnostic mean? Anybody know? What does Gnostic mean? I didn't know. I had to. So Gnostic is the Greek word. It comes from the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge. And what Gnostic, it was like, a, it was like its own 
part of Christianity back then is they believed that the more you knew, or all the, if you knew all this stuff, that's how you found salvation. Sound like any religion that we know of nowadays? Anybody know? Ideas? What do you think? Anybody? You know, somebody famous is in it. Uh, Scientology? Yeah, bro. <laughs> that's the one. It's similar. It's similar. You know, they, they secret knowledge. The more you know, the more secure your salvation is. And that's kind of what these claim to offer. Uh, and um, special, special knowledge hidden from ordinary people found in these. And that's how you find salvation. Uh, here's a quote. Uh, Gnosticism was and still is a theosophy full of many ingredients. Occultism, Oriental mysticism became focused with astrology, magic. They collected sayings of Jesus shaped to fit their own interpretation as in the Gospel of Thomas and offered their inheritance in an alternative or rival form of Christianity. So those are some things. Um, so let's do a little history of the, of the Gnostic Gospels. When do you think they were written? Without looking at the screen. All right. When do you think, anybody know when the New Testament was written? The Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul's letters, all of those. Jesus died about 33 A.D., somewhere around there. When do you think all these Gospels were written that we trust so deeply? Guess? Okay, he died 33 A.D. We're in 2018. 66. Josh says 66. Wild guess. Anybody else? I would say like 100. 100 and... 100 AD. 100 AD. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Alex, you want to take a whack at it? Don't think. All right. Don't think so. All right. Well, say let's say uh, uh, say Kimberly, some odd reason, passed away. Okay. She's from old age, and somebody wanted to write a biography about her. Uh, how long would you wait to write it? <laughs> As soon as possible. Yes, probably. You know, in those days, in those days, uh, just uh, you know, just something to think about when you're studying this is that they would do most of their, um, most of the way they got the messages across be is because they memorized it oral, orally, or they'd remember everything that was said and they would tell you rather than give you a book. Uh, but there came a point to where they actually started writing it down. All right. So the question was, when were they written? These were written uh, between 150 to like 400 years, actually, after Jesus died. That's when these started being written. The Gospels were written in the first 100 years. So, it's a big, there's a big reason why you should be a little skeptical of these, and we'll get to that. Um, so, when were these found? It's crazy. They were found in 1945. <laughs> Not too long ago. 1945, these books were found in Egypt. There was these cousins, I think they were digging around someplace looking for stuff, and they found this pot and these, uh, um, these scrolls and these leather-bound books, uh, which, the, you know, these 52 all, uh, here it is, buried in a sealed jar were found by a local farmer named Muhammad al-Saman. They the writings contain 52 Gnostic treaties and three translations of Plato's Republic. All right, here's what they look like. Uh, so you got leather-bound um, books. You have some manuscripts there, all in an earthen pot in 1945. All right. So here's some of the books. I know it's really small, but these are all the different books in there, Apocalypse of Paul, the Apocalypse of James, Second Apocalypse of James, the Apocalypse of Adam. Wouldn't that be interesting? What? Adam wrote a book? What? You know? I don't know how, like 6,000 years later, but uh, the Acts of Peter and the Twelve. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that are really interesting. Like, ooh, I would love to know that. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of them. Um, oh yes, okay, see if you can tell me what book this is from, this quote. Uh, and he said, whoever discovers the interpretation of these sayings will not taste death. 
Any takers? Matthew. Do you, sounds like Matthew. Which book of the Bible do you think that's from? All right, well, let's try the next one. The companion of the Savior is Mary Magdalene, but Christ loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her often on her mouth. The rest of the disciples were offended. They said to him, Why do you love her more than all of us? The Savior answered and said to them, Why do I not love you as I love her? Which one is this? Luke? Mark, possibly. Elmer? You don't know? Do you think it's in the Bible? No. You don't think so? All right, well, this is from the Gospel of Philip. This is from the Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas <clears throat> is the only one that sounds much like the actual works of the Bible. That's, that, one is, that one at one time was accepted by early Christians as maybe you know, just part of the actual Bible, um, but not widespread. So that one is the only one that people, it's a possibility. But you know, wait till you see, what, read the end of it. All right? So the New Testament canon, um, <clears throat> the New Testament, you guys know how many books are in the New, New Testament? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all the way to Revelations. 27. 27 books. Uh, they were, when, when, you know, they weren't all in a book from day one. They were scattered all over people. You know, there were letters roaming around. Um, but it wasn't until uh, AD 367 that this canon was formally ratified. And then 393 at the Council of Hippo. And then 397. So they had these times where it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always in a book. They had to gather everything together and put it together into a Bible. And that's what we have today. Um, so that happened in the 300s when that started getting formed. Uh, so this is where we're going to talk a little bit about um, why why these aren't included in that. Uh, like I said, 1945 is when they were actually found. Um, they made a movie on it, The Da Vinci Code. They said, the Bible you've been reading is a phony. This is, no, this is telling us all the things that really happened. Uh, and if you think nobody lost their faith over it, I've read some stuff and a lot of people have lost, you know, they said, what? Jesus slept with Mary Magdalene. They had a kid and then all this stuff. And you know, mess people up. Thank my goodness. Um, you know, you found these ancient scrolls. Um, so, why aren't they included in the New Testament? And there's three reasons. Um, one one thing because this this may come up if you talk to somebody. You know, you maybe you guys decide. Alex decides to tell his friends, "Hey, I went to church this week. We studied the Bible." Why you believe that stuff? Uh, yeah, I you know I kind of do. Uh, why? You know, aren't they, didn't you hear that they found like these 52 other Gospels that aren't included in there that kind of like contradict everything? And and what are you going to say? Oh, yeah, I don't know about that, you know? Because uh, some, you know, this is this is not a secret. Everybody knows, a lot of people know about it. I, I didn't know about it, actually, until recently. Um, but it's a pretty big deal. And there's three reasons why they aren't in the New Testament or aren't included. Uh, and there's three reasons why the ones we have are included. Um, but the point I was telling you is that uh, when they did all these meetings to gather the New Testament, they didn't go into a meeting like, uh, like a voting, like, okay, we got all these different options, let's vote on it. It was more of everybody in the old, in the old days, everybody already knew which ones were real. They already knew Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They already knew the apostles. Every, everybody had a good idea that these were the real deals. Um, but all these legendary things started coming out and confusing people. And that's why they had these meetings to say, okay, look, we need to, uh, we just need to gather the ones we know to be true so that everybody knows that the others are phonies. And there was three things they looked for. Apostolic origin, widespread acceptance, conformity to the rule of faith, all right? I'm going to break them down for you. So why aren't these included? Three reasons. Apostolic origin. Were they written by an eyewitness, an apostle? 
or at least somebody who knew an apostle, who had a, a relationship with them. Uh, there's this guy that I'm getting the info from, he's a detective, and he um, it's called Cold Case Christianity. He became a Christian, he was an atheist, and he said, I'm going to use my skill as a detective to find out if this Jesus thing is really true, and he did. He studied it, he went through all the evidences, and he came out a Christian. Um, and he uses his same detective skills on the Gnostic Gospels, and he says, when I, when I question people, like say there was a murder, I, question, I don't question the people who heard from other people. I go right to the eyewitness, or at least somebody who really knew the eyewitness and they had a relationship, kind of something like that. It's got to be close. Uh, if it's 40 years later some, by somebody else who wasn't even there, or stuff like that, I don't trust it. You know, I can't. Um, so with the, with the Gnostic Gospels, were they written by at least an apostle or somebody close to an apostle who got the information from them? Um, they had to have been written within the first century because all the apostles died after the first century. Okay, So if they were written in 300 AD, they were all dead. And there's no way because they have apostle of Peter, apostle of Thomas, but they were all dead by then. Uh, it had to have been written early enough. Uh, were they even present? The New Testament was written in the first century. Okay, it was, it, and that's why we know that it's true because if it was written in the first century when the apostles were alive, somebody put their name on it, they would have been able to say, that's phony. They would have stopped it, but they didn't. It, it kept going. But these came after and they started blowing up. Uh, okay, that's point one. They weren't written by eyewitnesses. They weren't written by whoever they said they were. They were they're claimed to be forged. Somebody just put their name on it. Said Thomas wrote it, uh, but it really wasn't him. Um, that's point number one. Widespread acceptance. They had to have been accepted by most Christian churches around that time. Uh, you know, somebody writes a book. Uh, you know, you know how gossip starts. Somebody write something about our church say you know what they do in that church they uh they all smoke weed and they you know they party you know during the services or something and you know us being alive we're going to say we're going to write back that isn't the case you know we actually smoke other stuff <laughs> <laughs> just kidding you know we you know we, we can correct it we can correct it uh not everybody's gonna accept it because they know it's phony but, so, was the, was the Gnostic Gospels accepted by all the churches at that time? No, they didn't. They didn't all accept them. There were some, though. Some of the major leaders did say, yeah, we do like some of these, and they did use them. But as a whole, no. Um, and just so you know, even some of the Gospels that we have today, like Peter, there was a lot of churches that didn't accept the Gospel of Peter for a while, uh, the book of Peter. Book of James, or a couple other ones. They didn't accept them until later. The only ones that everybody really knew was the four Gospels and the works of Paul. Um, so, again, it's a lot of info, but it'll, it'll help you because I want to make sure you guys know, can you trust that thing over there that claims to be the Word of God? Uh, here's, a, here's a quote from Irenaeus, and he lived between 130 and 210. Uh, he says, From this it is clear that the Word... The artificer of all things being manifested to men gave us the gospel, fourfold in form, but held together by one spirit. Okay, fourfold. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Uh, he said in that early time, everybody knows there's four gospels. That's what he was saying. So when they did these councils, 300 something, they didn't say, okay, we need to decide. They were like, everybody already knows. Let's just make it legit and let's, let's clear this up. Um, because that's a big deal. You have to listen to the arguments to, to hear how big a deal it is. Um, so that's the second widespread acceptance. Not everybody accepted these Gospels, 52 of them. Uh, and the third one, conformity, conformity to the rule of faith. All right, okay, say they were written by someone who knew an apostle. Say they, um, what was the other one? Say they are accepted by everybody. 
what do they contradict? What do they have to say about everything else the Bible says? Do they reflect the traditional faith of the early church? They can't, the one thing is that they can't go against Jesus' teachings. If these are legit, they can't go against what Jesus actually said. The Gospel of Thomas says this, <clears throat> Women became men to get to heaven. Okay, I'm going to read it to you because it's pretty wild. Uh, let me find it. Gospel of Thomas. And if anybody wants to borrow this, feel free. So only men go to heaven, according to Thomas? Yeah, you have to become a man to go to heaven. I know, it's. I don't really understand it. All right, here we go. <clears throat> wow. We're, we're... Uh, well, I thought it was in chapter one. I don't know where it is. <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but somewhere in there. Uh, so women have to become men to go to heaven. In the Gospel of Thomas, we're just looking at Thomas right now. There's no stories of Jesus. They don't have any stories of that. It's just wisdom. They use a lot of Jesus' sayings. He copies a lot of stuff. Um, but the biggest thing, which is Gnosticism, which is found in these, is that if you, the more you know, if you know these things, then you can go to heaven. So it's Gnosticism is knowledge. i got to know more to get to heaven and it is it is tempting i was tempted this week i thought wow i wonder what the gospel of adam has to say you know or i wonder what the uh you know the parts where it said talks about jesus in his younger years in a teenager when he was how old are you alex 19, 19. what did jesus do when he was 19 you know did he hang out with the homeboys or was he you know what did he do uh you know what you know what wondering what you know because that <laughs> book claims to to say what he did um, but there's some issues with it. They weren't written by eyewitnesses or someone close to them. They were written really late. They weren't, uh, they weren't accepted by the church at that time as a whole. Some people did. And they didn't conform to the rule of faith. They had a lot of contradictions. They would say things against what Jesus actually said. All right? So... Those are three, three reasons. They're ba three basic reasons just to look at. Um, there's a lot more, but uh, man, I would like to read a little bit of the. Where is it? Let's see if I can find it. What? Anybody know the time? Ten forty-three. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. How if any of them actually like? contain like the gospel message or talk about Jesus or do Some, a lot of them not there's you know what there's a detailed I didn't I didn't read all of them I didn't even read all of one of them like Thomas for example that doesn't, yeah. think, doesn't talk about talk, Jesus yeah, yeah. I, but I think the reason why they call them Gnostic is because that they they don't preach the gospel they don't preach that you know you're saved through faith in Christ they preach you to know these things you got to understand all these mysteries to be saved um, so at least I again I, I am no expert on this I would have to I'd have to actually read them which I was listening to it I was listening to it as I was driving the Gospel of Thomas um, but the just read, read something from it I'm yeah curious, like what it, yeah that's what it sounds it. like <clears throat> I heard a, um, a preacher, an apologist, I think it was Nabil Qureshi, he said that if the Bible, the Bible that we know, had no gospel message or no details of Jesus, then there's no way we can trust it at all, like the Bible itself. So Jesus and the gospel need to be present in order to know that it's true. I don't, That's know, true. I don't know if this helps. Thomas one fourteen one. Okay. This thing's hard to. Thomas one fourteen one says, uh, Simon Peter said to them, Let Mary leave us, for a woman are not worthy of life. Jesus said, 
I myself shall lead her in order to make her male. That's so it. That, so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every woman who will make herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. Where, what is that? You said 114.1? 1? 114.1. Thomas. Is that like a page number or is that like a chapter? Uh, yeah, yeah, here it is right here. It's, 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 uh, they don't have chapters, it's just verses. So, yes, okay, this is it right here. It says, Shimon Kepha said to them, Miriam should leave us. Females are not worthy of life. Yeshua said, look, I shall guide her to make her male, so she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every female who makes herself a male will enter the kingdom of heaven. All right, so, I mean, you, you know, there's probably some depth to that and what that means but I mean just that's yeah. it's crazy uh, that's it. That's it. the Bible the way the Bible contradicts that he says there's neither female nor male we're all we're all one in, in, in the kingdom of God you know it's not that men women have to become men um, that's not the case God actually God actually praises women for being women yeah, that's how he made you to be a girl he doesn't want you to become a guy. You know, that's not, according, well, a cultural belief, that's, you know, you can do whatever you want. But, um, and there's some other things in the Gospel of John and Philip. Um, there's there's uh, the Gospel of Judas. In the Gospel of Judas, um, it says that Jesus told Judas to betray him. So they had this all, it was like rigged. Uh, Judas, you know, betray me. You're going to you know, do this. Sacrifice yourself. You're going to be glorified for this and so you know it uh, it's tempting to get into some of that but three big reasons there's a lot of others is they weren't written by eyewitnesses the names put on these were they're, they're believed to be forged because they're way way after these guys died um, some of these were written in the 200 300 uh, <coughs> century after after Jesus after the apostles um, so when they came out though in 1945 everybody was like oh man what the heck and it wrecked a lot of people so the like i said the idea is to understand why are these not included in there because the ones we have in there are validated there's so many historical documents and i told everybody before co compared the new the got the new testament has uh historical copies that are way early compared to everything else it's crazy there's uh if you look at some of the other historical evidence historical documents just for that time period they stack up about four feet high but the historical documents for the new testament around the same time period stack up a mile high it's there's like 20 something thousand manuscripts so we can look back which we learned last week and we'll, maybe at some time we'll talk about while well, there's so many versions of the bible we have we don't have the actual originals, but we have the original copies, and there's we can look back and see all the differences and all that. We learned about variances last week. Um, so um, here's a quote: "To build your house on the rock is to hear what Jesus says and obey. To be foolish and build your house on the sand is to hear and ignore." Okay, so. Again, you know, we have all these, we got the Apocrypha, which at some point maybe we'll talk about that. We have the Gnostic Bible. We have, well, the Catholic Bible is pretty much the same as that, just has some of the Apocrypha in it. We have the Mormon, Book of Mormon in there. Uh, we have the Quran, which people will die for these. And we have the Bible. And uh, so Jesus is making the claim that if you, if you build your life on what Jesus said, the New Testament Gospels, you're building your house on the rock. And he's saying, if you build your house on anything else, it's sand. And, you know, do you have confidence of that? I, and I think about, you know, how many of us would be confident enough to whip out our Bible in at work or at maybe a lunch period at school and start reading it? And people say, ew, what are you reading? Or, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, to know that I, I, just in learning about all this stuff, I'm getting more confidence in knowing this book this is not because a lot of people will say, "Oh, that is that's all, uh, that's all phony or that's all um, myth, myths." myths. You, how you can you really believe that? But you look in history, look at all the evidence. There's so much supporting this. It's crazy. 
So, I mean, you should feel great holding that thing in your hand, um, reading it, uh, because there's, there's a lot of stuff to back it up. Um, and, and again, you know, we've been going over it. I know today is just kind of brief on the Gnostics. If you want to read it, check it out. Uh, I also got a book. Oh, where did I put it? This book, uh, it's called Evidence That Demands a Verdict. So they go through a ton of evidences for the Bible, for Christianity, for Jesus. And uh, it's really, really good. Um, I, I use some of it just to help me for today. But uh, if you're interested, you, know, you can check this out. And uh, I think it's a great way to help your faith. Um, but like I said, the question we're trying to answer is, can you trust the Bible? We saw how it was developed last week. We saw today that there's 52 other Gospels that aren't included in there. Why not? Because they weren't written early enough. Um, not everybody accepted them at that time to be real. And they contradict a lot of what Jesus said. They don't, you know, they don't even talk about the Gospel. Uh, so the ones that we have today are... That's the that's you know I've come to believe and I, I, a lot of people who do the study come to believe that those are the real that's, that's the real deal right there, um, they're real. So can you base your whole life on the words of this book that they are true and teach us accurate doctrine? Um, so that's the real question, and I don't know that anybody I don't know that you guys would base all of your faith just on this short brief class that I've given. But it's just to help you think about it. You know, what are you basing your life on? Is it based off what your parents taught you? Is it based off what you believe to be true? Whatever your music you listen to, they teach us. You know, who are we listening to? What's backing it up? Uh, is it worth doing? But, you know, that book, that ancient book right there, claims to have the words of life. You know, that's what Jesus says. It's been written, actually, by God for us. And... Uh, and we're, you know, that's we're a church. We we're basing everything on that book. Um, so next week we're going to start something a little different. Uh, Elmer's going to uh, start teaching next week on something. Uh, I don't know that he's. We're going to continue. We may, but uh, if you haven't really learned about the Gnostic Gospels, you know, maybe today wasn't all that interesting for you. But if you read it, watch the Da Vinci Code. It might spark something because it's wild. Uh, Jesus is everything the Bible says. So, uh, you guys have any questions? Any any uh, anything you think that uh, we should touch on in the next classes um, the, about the Bible that maybe you you're concerned? I know at some time I'd like to talk about miracles because uh, nobody believes. A lot of people don't believe that there is Jesus actually did miracles. I talked to a guy this week and he said, "How did Jesus turn water to wine? I mean, come on." I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How do you rise from the dead? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's, those are, you know. I, I encourage you, I was going to tell you guys, I would encourage you to just, I don't think, you know, for, like for Elmer or for anybody here, I don't think, I don't expect you guys to go start converting people right now. Just ask them, what do you believe and why? I, I think I'd be crazy. You know, so just ask them. And they ask, what do you believe? Well, I don't know yet. You know, I'm just asking. That's fine, but just ask, because you'd be surprised what some people say. And I'm learning that, as I talk, because I meet with customers, like, several every day, and somehow we get on the subject. I don't know how. Just one little word, and boom, it takes us a whole different direction. Uh, and uh, it's kind of fun just to hear what everybody thinks, and to know this stuff is, everybody's really confused. And if you guys know what you believe, it'll sure is. It'll help a lot of people out who are confused, like I'm sure some of you guys are. So uh, let's pray. I know it's late, but let's pray. Um.